Hi, it's Dr. Martin. I wanted to spend a few minutes with you this morning before I run off to surgery to discuss a little bit about knee arthritis. And what I wanted to do is maybe even tell you a few things that might help you avoid me. Not that I'm a bad guy or anything. I just really have a genuine interest in helping people avoid knee surgery. I know it's strange because I'm in scrubs and I'm off to surgery, but there's definitely some simple things that can be done. The first thing that I really like to tell people is educate yourselves. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning is knee arthritis and tell you everything that you need to know. So in order to understand what knee arthritis is, first you have to understand what a normal knee looks like. And a normal knee has this spongy, shiny material called cartilage in it. And that's like the cushion in our knee that allows us to, to walk and move and run and jump without pain. There's also lots of other important structures around the knee, the meniscus and the, and the ligaments and the tendons and the strong muscles which surround the knee. There's nerves, there's blood vessels. There's a lot going on in the knee, and therefore there's a lot that can go wrong. But when you look at arthritis, there's two types. There's osteoarthritis, which is a very mechanical condition, and then there's something called inflammatory arthritis, and that's where something's gone terribly wrong in the body where the body's actually attacking the joint. And that's a more serious, but fortunately more rare. And that includes conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or, or gout, um, psoriatic arthritis, and a bunch of other things. The main thing I want to focus on is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis in the knee is extremely common. Even on our CDC's website, <clears throat> they published a study which shows that approximately one out of every two of us will develop symptomatic knee arthritis at some point in our life. What I like to call osteoarthritis is degenerative joint disease. And I think this is a more broad term and it really um, applies to the knee because it's not only the cartilage that can go bad, it's, it's all the structures around. And that's what I'm going to show you. See, I believe there's something called a final common pathway. And what that means is, despite what's going on inside the knee, it's all part of the degenerative joint process. So there's meniscal tears that can occur. There's baker cysts and popliteal cysts. There's runner's knee, what's called patellofemoral pain syndrome. Um, there's rheumatoid and, and inflammatory arthritis can also lead to secondary degeneration of the knee. Um, ACL tears can lead to instability and cause the knee to wear. You can have accidents or injuries around the knee, which can happen over time, uh, which can injure the knee on a little tiny basis each time. Or sometimes if there's a bad trauma, it can realign the knee and cause excess stress and lead to degeneration. Obesity can, can lead to knee pain by putting increased pressure on the joint. Um, uh, not being in good shape, having weak muscles can lead to increased stress on the joint causing pain and further degeneration. If the if you're not eating properly or or you're not drinking enough water, that can, can exacerbate things. And even mental states like being depressed or anxious can lead to a sensation of increased pain or symptoms resulting from underlying knee arthritis. But the take home point is that all these different factors can contribute to knee arthritis and how it affects you. So how does it affect people? Well, people feel pain, they can feel stiffness, their knee can get swollen, but what all this culminates in is that it affects people's quality of lives, their ability to function, to perform their activities of daily living and do the things that they want or need to do. In essence, what happens is it creates an unhappy knee. And we like happy knees. So why is surgery not always the answer? Well, I've been telling um, my patients this for a while. You can't, you can't, at this time, put back what's been lost. You know, we don't know how to regrow cartilage to any large degree or to really regrow meniscus or ligaments or tendons. Um, 
And so when you go in there and do arthroscopic surgery, what we know is it really doesn't uh, help any better than non-operative measures. That's been shown in numerous studies now. So I usually urge people to use surgery as a last resort. And there's a lot that can be done ahead of time to improve the way you feel without surgery. And that includes a multimodal approach. And what this means is um, you can incorporate a powerful combination of education, meaning learning everything about your condition so you can improve it, nutrition, meaning learning what to eat, what not to eat, uh, weight management, and what supplements work and what supplements don't work to help your condition, fitness, meaning learning the appropriate exercises so you can strengthen the muscles around the knee and improve your overall well-being so your knees can feel better, and then support, meaning learning the appropriate but safe things to do to help you when you're not feeling so great, and that can allow you to go on with your life. So this powerful four-part system can really lead to an improvement of your quality of life despite what's going on inside the knee. And that's really uh, what I want to share with you this morning, and I hope you have a great day.